Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. We have quite a wide and varied audience, audience of all ages. Certainly, since I started doing video, pushing a lot of it to YouTube, I've gained a younger audience, substantially younger audience. Uh, my MySpace and Facebook friends are, are largely uh, kids in high school and college, uh, some uh, female, largely though in the male demographic, which is good, it's a good demographic to go after, but I also have quite a large elder audience. Um, people who have retired and started to get into computing in general, um, you know, they, they were certainly with me in the early years because we were the only ones who could afford, or they were, the only ones who could afford computers or internet access when it was so brand new uh, outside the education sector and military sector at that matter. Uh, we've got a top five list from Clay Colwell, and uh, he always signs his emails to me, your neighborhood Mac, Linux, and Windows expert. Mac, MacBoy14 is his handle. He's got a top five list, computing for the elderly. It's very important. In fact, my grandfather has been on the internet, and I, I realize it sounds kind of funny if I say that out loud, but, you know, they, uh, he doesn't really do a lot on the internet, but he is online. Uh, I don't know if he's really figured out what he would use the internet for, but certainly he's at least been online. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, top five tips for computing for the elderly. Number one, use the Dvorak keyboard layout. Now, that's not John C. Dvorak. It's less stressful on the hands and the wrists because the most commonly used letters are together. There's less movement involved to get to those letters, which equals less energy being used, which equals good for bad joints. Number two, if you're getting the elderly started on their first computer or trying to help someone who is having trouble seeing the screen, get them a big monitor with a high resolution. When you set it up for him or her, set the re resolution lower than the optimal, say 1152 by 864, for instance, for a monitor with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio and an optimal resolution of 1600 by 1200. This will help in several ways. First, some websites are wider than 1024 pixels in width. If you have a smaller monitor with a resolution of 1024 by 768, they have to scroll horizontally. If you can set the resolution higher, then they don't have to do that. Second, the monitor is big, so lower resolution added to a bigger size will make the text and images even bigger, making them easier to see. Number three, they don't need a fast computer. You can get them an older or slower computer. First, most likely, they're going to use it only for the internet. And for most computers beyond 1999, that'll work just fine. Second, if they are patient, then they won't mind waiting for programs to start. Number four, get them started on Linux or even an old Mac. This way, they don't have to worry about viruses, spyware, and all the junk you would always have to update. Doing the updates will probably not happen also. Doing the update. Oh, he, he's saying that they probably would never update their software anyway. My grandparents will not update their protection. I've showed them how, programmed it in for the app to automatically update, but they stop it when it starts. I would guess that many other people would too. Another advantage to Linux or Mac would be that they are stable. Even on the best Windows machines, you can get errors while browsing the web. Save them from that torture. Well, any program will give you problems. I've had just as many problems with you know Mac programs as I have with Windows programs. If I, though, to this as a s s side note, my own note, if I were to start an elder on computing today, it would be a Mac. Sorry, all you Linux fans. Sorry, all you Windows fans. I'm sorry. Uh, I would totally start my grandfather on a Mac. Uh, sorry. No, actually, I'm not sorry. It's just the way it is. Number five, help them out with the computer when you can. When you're there to help them, then they know that you really care about them. Also, besides that, they enjoy the company. Fair enough. In fact, when I lived in Iowa and when both my grandmother, when she was still alive, and my grandfather, who is still alive, uh, I did make it a point to stop by at least every week, and I, I don't call them as much, or him, since my grandmother passed away last year, um, I should probably call more frequently than I do. Of course, it's kind of nice to do these videos too, even though the, he doesn't have broadband, my dad doesn't have broadband, they try to watch the videos, and apparently DSL in Iowa is horrible. Um, and they're not going to pay extra for it. My grandfather, I think, is still on dial-up. Probably has AOL, uh, most likely. I don't know. Um, this is the way I like communicating, uh, through video. Uh, 
I tend to educate better in a broad sense rather than a one-on-one -on -one sense because I, I tend to get frustrated. You've seen me try to teach things to my wife and, and getting a little hot under the collar um, when I'm because I get frustrated if I can't explain something or they're thinking of something else. Uh, I try not to, but uh, y you never know. Uh, yes, it is OS 10. In fact, the Mac will tell you if you type in, say, OS X on the command line with quotes in OS X, it'll say OS 10. X is a Roman numeral for 10. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Not X, 10. Hey, maybe that's a tip. Maybe uh, maybe you didn't know that before. Maybe you did. Maybe you have another top five tips for elders uh, in technology, elders and technology. I'll take any kind of top five tips you got. Top 10 tips, top X tips, doesn't matter. <laughs> you can email me, chris at perillo.com. You can even embed this video or send this video to uh, you know someone who's got uh, an elder in their well in their family most likely or just an elder in their computing circles or you know is is wondering what uh, how, what they can do to help an elder along and getting started with computing or getting used to computing. Um, I don't know what, what what computing experiences would you recommend for elders or people just getting started with technology who are a little older than maybe you or I. Let me know what you think. You got my email address and if you want to join us in chat. I'm not just pointing at my desk, I'm actually pointing underneath it. Uh, the people who I've been interacting with, well, partially at least during the recording of the video, uh, we're here all the time. And you, you never really know what we're doing uh, until we're in the middle of doing it. But the only way to find out uh, what we're doing is by stopping by. And the nice thing is, is that we're open all the time. Even if I'm not sitting in this chair, or even if you don't see this video streaming out on the net, the video is on the internet somewhere. And it's live, 24 hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.